the amount of income or money that you have been spending every month is not probably enough to meet the current needs when you go to try and buy the goods and services that you have already been consuming over the last couple of months. And this cannot be attributed to inflation. When the prices of goods and services rise, what you end up having is this situation where you have decreased purchasing power. This means that for the same amount of money that you have been using, you are going to get less goods and services because of an increase in the prices. As the cost of goods and services increase, this is going to affect your budget and it is going to affect it in a very, very big way, which is why you need to think through of how you are going to survive in a period when the inflation is rising. If your current income is not going to cover your expenses, then it means that you need to have a very deep look at your personal finances. It is not easy to admit that probably the amount of money you have will not be able to buy all the goods and services that you need. But with the rise in inflation, this is the best decision that you can do. It is the best thing that you can do for your own good and also to ensure that you avoid a financial crisis in the coming months. Because there is a whole conversation allowed rising inflation, rising interest rates, and the possibility that the economy is already in a recession. This increase in prices of goods and services in an economy is what economists call inflation. It's a concept that you need to understand because in one way or the other, it is going to affect your pocket directly. If you are feeling that there is an increase in the prices of things that you are buying with the money that you generate or earn every month, then this is all being caused by high inflation. And there are a few concepts that probably you need to understand when it comes to inflation. One of them is the inflation rate, which is basically a measure of the prices or the increase in the prices of goods and services in an economy. And consumer price index. This is basically a, a way in which the economists or central bankers try to figure out an average weighted basket of the goods and services that you buy. That is how they are able to keep a pass on what is going on when it comes to inflation. When you look at the action that has been taken by the central bank over the last couple of months and probably years, you may be able to see a relationship between inflation and interest rate. This is because these two work together. And for you to be able to have a bigger picture of probably the direction the economy or the economic policy is going, it's good to look at how those two are interacting. To understand inflation, you need to take time and try and figure out what causes inflation. And one of the biggest cause of inflation is the supply of money in the economy. In fact, some argue that supply of money or the money in the economy is actually the greatest or the root of all inflation. In a nutshell, money supply is the total amount of cash circulating in the economy. This is what you'll find a lot of people referring to as M1 and M2 when it comes to the whole idea of money. One of the roles of central bank in a country is to regulate the money supply. And what you'll find is that the central banks through their monetary policy teams will try to come up with either expansionary or contractionary policies to try and manage the supply of money in the economy. And as I mentioned, supply of money is one of the major causes of inflation. Therefore, you need to be able to be keen to observe what your central bank or the central bank in your country is doing with regard to managing the supply of money. That will give you an indication of how they are also trying to help or manage the inflation. For example, one of the conversations that has been going on lately is the fact that central banks have increased the basis lending rate. 